Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you the process of how I shape and profile cane for bassoon. I use two profilers in my setup, an MD single barrel profiler and a Hertzberg double barrel profiler. I'll explain why later. With my gouged cane, I start with the MD profiler. This is a single barrel profiler similar to what most university studios might have. I have it set up to leave the cane on the thick side just to reduce wear and tear on my other profiler but most people get by perfectly well using just a single barrel profiler like this set up to more finished dimensions. I also prefer to do my first profile before I shape, and you'll see why later. You could also shape first, depending on your preferences and setup. Making sure the cane is soaked, the first thing you want to do is align the cane with the marks on the cane barrel and clamp it down. Then putting the barrel back in place, I like to first press down on the blade carriage while turning the barrel in its fully forward and fully back position just to score where the collar and center line will be. Then we can begin profiling. Starting with the blade carriage as far back as it will go, draw the blade across the cane. When you've hit the center line, lift the carriage, return it to its starting position, and repeat. With each repetition, you can slightly rotate the cane barrel so that the scrapes overlap. After about two passes across the entire width of the cane, lift up the cane barrel, rotate it, and repeat the process on the other side. It's important to think of lateral motion when doing this. Pressing down too hard on the cane can cause fissures on the underside of the cane to open up, which can lead to cracks in your reeds during the finishing process down the road. Repeat this process of rotating the barrel and profiling until no more cane is being removed on either side. At this point, if you're using a single profiler setup, you're done. Make sure to mark the center line with a pencil for easy reference later on. Now it's time to shape. The shaper that I like to use is a Hertzberg shaper. You can tell because it says Hertzberg projects on it. The reason I like to do my profiling before shaping is that it makes it easier to center the piece of cane into the shaper. So using our marked center line as a guide, center the piece of profiled cane into the shaper clamp. Once you are sure it's centered, you can tighten down the screws to clamp it down. My shaper also has two alignment screws to help it align properly on my double barrel profiler. Most shapers don't have these, but if yours does, go ahead and tighten them down at this point. In shaping, our primary goal is to remove the cane sticking out from the sides of the clamp so that the edges of the cane sit as flush to the clamp as possible. I like to use this X-Acto knife which has a nice ergonomic handle. I'll put a link for that down in the description below if anybody wants to pick one up for themselves. Making sure you've got a fresh sharp blade to work with, start slicing the cane from the sides off in small increments until the contour of the shaper is matched.
Typically when I'm doing this, I rest the base of the shaper against my sternum, uh, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just resting it against the table. You always wanna be careful not to cut towards your hands when you're doing this. Now my shaper has these center line cutouts. Um, I generally don't bother with those too much because uh, that part of the reed's gonna be clipped off anyway. Always remember to start at the center line of the cane and slice outward from there. If your shape has a flare at the back, like the Hertzberg does, you'll need to make a cut in the opposite direction as well to accommodate that. Once the cane is completely flush to the shaper on all sides, you are done. Loosen the alignment screws if you have them, loosen the clamp screws, and take out your shaped piece of cane. If you're only using a single barrel profiler setup, then you are finished with this step of the process and you can move forward with forming blanks. For me, at this point, I move on to my Hertzberg profiler. The Hertzberg profiler is a double barrel profiler and since it's a more high-end piece of equipment, the reason I use two profilers is to save the extra wear and tear on this machine. A double barrel profiler means that there are two turning barrels instead of a single one like most profilers have. There is the cane barrel, which we're familiar with, and then there is a round, contoured template barrel, which establishes the reed's dimensions more effectively than the flat template that most single barrel profilers have. Both barrels can be removed. Uh, the template barrel can be removed to make adjustments, uh, but we are going to leave the template barrel in its place for now. Taking our shaped piece of cane, align the indentations on the underside of the cane, uh, made from the alignment screws on the shaper, with the alignment pins on the cane barrel. This ensures that the center of the cane's profile will exactly match the center of the cane's shape. As with the single barrel profiler, once the cane is aligned on the barrel, tighten down the clamps to hold the cane in place. This profiler uses a linkage to ensure that the two barrels turn in unison with one another. Once the linkage is attached, you can profile the cane using the same process as you would normally with a single barrel profiler. Remember to undo the linkage, rotate the barrel, and replace the linkage frequently so that the blade doesn't catch and lift up the cane.
Repeat this process until no more cane is being removed by the blade. Once no more cane is removed, the process is finished. Undo the linkage, remove the barrel, undo the clamps, and remove your finished cane. At this point, you can move on to making blanks. Check out our video link in the description for a tutorial on how to make bassoon reed blanks using our Cornelison forming pen and mandrel set. If you found this helpful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching.